in the first part of the problem, we're trying to figure out what the energy stored in this system is uh, for two concentric spherical shells, one of them with a radius of A that has a total charge of positive Q, and then another one with a radius of B with a total charge of negative Q, right? And so we were uh, hinted to use this, uh, this equation right here, and uh, we'll go ahead and use that. And the, the first glaring thing about this equation is knowing that trying to figure out what the electric field is for these two, all right? So it's a squirrel, squared term, so um, we're going to have to make sure that uh, uh, it could potentially have some cross terms, but we'll go ahead and see what's on the inside of it over here. Um, so the, we know that on the inside of a spherical shell where, where there's nothing else that's present from Gauss's law, the electric field is proportional to the charge that's enclosed, and whenever you do in a Gaussian surface anywhere that's on the inside of this first uh, um, this first concentric field or concentric shell, um, we know that the electric field is going to be zero here on the inside. And then um, draw your attention to the very outside now. So the uh, total charge that's enclosed on the outside, if we do a gal uh, terrible Gaussian surface like I did here, the total charge is equal to negative Q plus positive Q. So the net positive charge on the inside is going on the outside is going to be zero. So um, we'll just go ahead and say that E on the outside is equal to zero here. And so that leaves one last uh, area, which is the region between these two. So if we do a Gaussian surface right here, the area that's enclosed or the, the electric field that's enclosed by this Gaussian surface is only equal to this positive Q, right? So we know that the electric field is only going to depend on the positive Q here. So I'll go ahead and write that over here, which is uh, the electric field. The only one that matters uh, for this problem is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q, because that's the charge, positive Q, because that's the charge that's inside, and then some R, where R is some dis any distance from here to here, here all the way out, any distance from A to B. And so that's what we're going to integrate over here. So we're technically doing all space. Right, so from the very center all the way out into infinity, but the regions here and here have electric fields that contribute nothing, uh, so those won't really matter. But regardless, I'll go ahead and do it explicitly here. Again, we're going over all space, so it'll be a triple integral. All right, we'll use spherical coordinates, so it'd be um, one over f the only electric field that contributes, which is the one I wrote out, R, and then. Um, Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. Here we go. Actually, it should be r squared. I'm sorry, r squared. And then um, oh, sorry, yeah, r squared. I got a little lost there. Dr d theta d phi. So that means we're going to be integrating from a to b. Again, technically it's from uh, zero to infinity, but we're also um, the only region that actually matters is between a and b. So since there are no phi or um, theta turns in here, these two integrals right here are just going to be equal to 4 pi. So I'll go ahead and do the 4 pi, but also take out all the constants here, which is just uh, those ones right here. So it'd be Epsilon naught to, uh, let's see here, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q, which I'll just put a Q right here, squared. And then this, just like I said, the spherical terms are going to be equal to 4 pi. 1 over R squared, squared, and then times squared right here, r squared dr. So now we just have to evaluate this integral. Ends up being just the integral of uh, 1 over r squared. Let's see here. Because this will end up being r to the fourth. So the integral of 1 over r squared is equal to negative 1 over r. Moving down here, I'll go ahead and just explicitly write out all the terms. Uh, let's see here, so this actually is 4 pi, we'll cancel out with one of the 4 pi's down there. So that'll just leave a uh, 4 pi down here, epsilon naught squared, epsilon naught here will cancel out. Leaves us one epsilon naught in the 
denominator, which is good. And one over R evaluated uh, from B to A. And then finally, we have our last part, which is, let's see here, Q. Let's just do a quantity of Q8 pi squared over epsilon naught. And then it's going to be 1 over A minus 1 over B here. And this kind of makes sense, right? So as uh, as A right goes to infinity, right? So as A gets bigger and bigger, so this, this circle keeps going bigger and bigger. As A goes to infinity, um, the uh, the amount of work that we have to do for that for that certain portion, for this, this only this one's concentric shell will go to zero because it will go to infinity. This whole term will go to zero, right? And that makes sense, right? So if we just if we uh, if we took this charge, all these little pieces, chunks of this uh, this spherical charge, and we went put them off into infinity, right? And then we're we're essentially not doing any work, right? Because the work is to bring them from infinity into this portion right here, right? So that makes sense that as these go out to infinity, uh, the work that they contribute go to zero. But as these terms go to zero, right? As these terms go to zero, these whole terms go to infinity, and that makes sense, right? It's because the more that we try to shove these uh, electric charges. And closer and closer together, then we're going to have to put infinite amount of energy in because uh, we're trying to squeeze them tighter and tighter and tighter. And obviously there's more physics that goes involved when you do something like that. But for the terms of our level of electrostatics right now and electrodynamics, uh, that, that seems to make sense for this first part of the problem.